This is uh, fascinating. Um, one more piece of sound uh, for the day. Um, I got some good news and some bad news via the O'Reilly report. Um, factor, man. The factor. Sorry. Factor. The O'Reilly factor. Good news and bad news coming from the O'Reilly factor. The good news is that it turns out President Obama is not the Antichrist. The bad news is he seems to be working for the Antichrist. <laughs> Here it is. New book called Perfect Ending, Why Your Eternal Future Matters Today. In the book, which is out tomorrow, Pastor Robert Jeffers says, President Obama's policies have some interaction with the Bible. With us now is the pastor. All right, the first issue is Obamacare. How does that have biblical implications? What I'm saying in the book, Bill, is that there's going to be a future world dictator uh, before Christ returns who's going to usurp people's personal feelings of, of rights. He's not only going to do that. He's war against God's people. He's going to change God's laws, and he's going to do it without any opposition. And my question was, how is he going to be able to pull that off? And my thesis is, people will have been conditioned long before the Antichrist comes to accept governmental overreach. And that's what you're seeing with President Obama. Okay. Now, for right those now. who don't know the Bible, this is based Hold on, on what? Walk now, so let me ask you uh, this question. Let's assume I'm to accept the premise of this guest on a national cable television show that <laughs> we, <clears throat> at one point, we're going to have a one-world dictator who is, um, who, uh, is going to be able to take over the world with the acceptance of the followers of all of us uh, because we are being trained by President Obama now to accept this dictatorial rule, of course, this will happen before the return of um, of of Christ, of Jesus Christ. Um, so, shouldn't we be thanking President Obama for getting this process rolling? I mean, isn't it supposed to be good when credit Jesus Christ, Christ comes too. back? You know what I mean? Let's get this thing over. Let's bring it on. Continue. Talk us through how you reached that conclusion that there are going to be a powerful leader, yes. not necessarily in the United States, right? That's right. It could be anyone right. who's then going to kind of galvanize the world in warfare against religious people, all right? Now, how did you arrive at that conclusion? Well, that's been the historic belief of the church for 2,000 years. Which church? Uh, the Christian church. Even Jews look forward to it. In Daniel chapter 7, they believe that there is going to be a world dictator. Uh, Daniel chapter 7 in the Old Testament right. talks about it. Revelation chapter 13 in the Bible talks about it as well. And as you pointed out, Bill, he's not only going to usurp people's personal freedoms, he's going to wage war against uh, God's own people. He's going to seek to change God's moral law, according to Daniel 7.25. Now, we had, that, we had that, to some extent, a pretty vivid extent, in World War II. Yes. With Hitler and the Nazis. Yes. And then we had it on a lesser extent with Stalin and the communists. Um, both ideologies tried to wipe out Christian beliefs uh, and philosophies. So this is going to be like that, worse than that? It's going to be worse than that. And I want to be clear to say to the folks, I'm not saying President Obama is the Antichrist. In fact, I'm sure he's not, because the Antichrist is going to have higher poll numbers, according to the Bible, at least at the beginning. But I believe he is conditioning people to accept governmental overreach, which they will finally give into when this final dictator comes, whether that's 10 years from now or a thousand years from now. I'm not one of but he doesn't consciously that. know that. It's no, just that no, his no. his liberal vision that the government should be large and should impose That's a right. certain lifestyle on the nation would make it easier for somebody down the lane to abuse that. Right. Okay. So let me see if I got this straight. Somewhere between a hundred and a thousand years from now, <laughs> Obama pushing for the Affordable Care Act is setting the table for a one-world dictator a thousand years from now. A thousand years from now. People are going to be going, thank God for the Affordable Care Act in the United States a thousand years ago. Your people are waiting for it too, Sam. <laughs> I don't know what you're mocking this for. No, I just want to get this straight because I've got to update my calendar. <laughs> 
The and only reason that Obama is not the Antichrist is his poll numbers are now, resting let me ask shy. You this. I, maybe I'm being naive here. Um, but wouldn't the Antichrist have the ability to mess around with the poll numbers to hide the fact ah. that he's the Antichrist? Hello? Now you're thinking like a biblical scholar. Okay. All right. This is the conclusion that I have made. And what that guy, Pastor Robert Jeffress, doesn't realize is that he is an unwitting dupe. He thinks that President Obama is an unwitting dupe for the Antichrist. Well, I say that Pastor Robert Jeffress is an unwitting dupe for President Obama. Go on by the approval ratings, hello, and the only one who has figured it out, where's my chalkboard, is <laughs> Bill O'Reilly, and I'm doing the calculations, and we will start accepting lifetime memberships to this program because <laughs> the Antichrist is here, and therefore, based upon my calculations, Can by, carry the two? by early March... The world is going to end. <laughs> you can see more at Benghazi slash Truth Backspace nine one one nine one one. That's the way they do Obama. all those uh, those uh, websites now. When they've got something like that, they add like a twenty twenty. You know, just like a like a number because it's the only way to distinguish their uh, their URL. Wait, early early March of this year. Yeah. So oddly, around the time Saul was first birthday would be hmm. The beast of Jerusalem. <laughs> <laughs> he is risen. <laughs>